microphone now oh dear there's all sorts of things happening tonight and we have to restart the stream so hopefully i will see you just in a sec as oh, this has come i'm so sorry about this this is just like technology always um no sound just as bad so now the sound should be better because i definitely changed the microphone so i unplugged it and plugged it back back again but every time i unplug it it just throws me off so let's see if it's any better i'm just going to go ahead and keep on beating that little strip and then we see how we go hopefully i'm crossing fingers that you will be able to come back and find me again i am so so sorry but you know it's the first few nights i guess we just got to iron out the little teething problems and working with technology and i have to get used to it as well and i'm not uh, i'm not the mastermind behind sort of computers and building websites Oh, it's better, Judy is saying. Yes, so I think the sound will be definitely better now because I unplugged and plugged the mic back, so it will be good. I just hope you can all come in and find me. I think it's like the Mac had a really big update the other day, so I updated the Mac, and then all my settings and passwords and everything else disappeared from the Mac and then the, the this software had an update as well so i updated this as well and then i lost the login again so i had to reset my password like two times within like three days and i can't believe that um i don't know like you go in you reset your password you set a new one and Two days later, I could not think the life of me that uh, what was the password I set, so I have to reset again. So I have to do a lot of a resetting on the computer and uh, probably going to have to go in. I go in tomorrow and have a little play with it all. Oh, Debbie, it is a learning curve. And for me, that um, definitely, I mean, I'm, I, I am sort of all right. <laughs> I can turn the computer on and off and check my emails and respond to emails i can use like adobe illustrator and do the um, instructions and bits of pieces so the one the things what i learn and use all the time i'm quite comfortable with but things when they are new and like there's a new problem comes up i just like froze because i don't know i'm i, I don't know what to do with it i don't know that um how i can fix things when something goes wrong with a computer and this is why like i switched over to a mac um oh god when it was probably about six years ago yeah six seven years ago and it was just it just worked so i plugged my phone into it it's worked i you know found the um, printer on it and it's worked and with PC before I always have to call Simon Simon come and help me but um, if something comes up like after an update and settings change I, <laughs> I haven't got a clue how to go in and change it so I'm gonna do a few more rows of this this is shaping up really nicely and you can see how the because these delica beads are a different shape um, they just make more of a more of a nice strips oh Debbie is saying I've not ever used YouTube or Zoom before Zoom before you mentioned it well I haven't used um, Zoom before this summer reader I think a lot of us is learning a lot of different things and I like was always I guess I don't know I do like Facebook so I do do like but I, I, I now I haven't really got time to go on my personal Facebook so I go on there for the business wise and um, I have watched videos before on YouTube I mean got well, since YouTube been out so going back years and years and years because if you wanted to know something like 
my toilet is broken, how do I fix it? Then the first thing you do is either Google it or you go on YouTube and try to find a video how to fix your toilet, I guess. So YouTube is really great for all the how-to videos and, and learning things and other bits of pieces. And Facebook in the last six months has done so many different updates of last year, I guess. Um, they bought us some really good ones. And I think in, in other, other ways as well, with some of their features, they just make everything a little bit more complicated. Um, Lauren is asking question, Kitty, do you do a print out grid like you did for herringbone stitch but for POD so we could work out our own patterns? Um, I think in the kit, I, I definitely did a grid. Um, we, we, def we, got, we definitely got a grid somewhere, I'm sure we have. I have to have a look. I think I did a grid for using different colors. For this one, I'm going to alter the sizes and I'm going to add some. Um, I'm going to add those lovely hematite beads into it. So I'm just doing because it's delicate beads, it's slightly a little bit smaller than so size 11. And I think I'm going to have to go and grab some size 11s just to sort of have that step up from it so it's not too big. So I'm going to need some size 11s and I reckon I'm going to need some size 8s as well. If I just do one row, probably it's going to look all right. Oh, hi, Janet. Janet has just joined us. Um, Lauren is saying, sounds great, but lost you had to go out and come back and kept getting all videos. We all have to, I suppose I have to learn it as well. There's a way I can schedule the videos where, when, and then we can even send you like a, a text or an email with the link that where the videos are, but I have to work it all out. I haven't, I haven't worked how to schedule and how to do that yet um, at all. So uh, there is uh, so much more you can do with YouTube as well. And there is different things you can do with Facebook, but, um, I guess with YouTube, like you know, that they can do certain things with your channel as well, and they can make things disappear. But with Facebook, um, they just change everything all the time. So, don't know. We see. We just try different things for different platforms, and we see just we see how we get along. So I'm just. I think I have got enough now. So I'm gonna have to. I don't really want to use. I have bought some two millimeter hematite home, which is these ones, these tiny ones. But I try to use these. Um, so this is two mil. That's three, and that's four. And I tried to use these two mils a long, long time ago. And I know, uh, as I remember, I really struggled with the hole coming back to the needle with it. So I'm. I'm trying not to use this, but that would be the right size to step up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab some size 11 seed beads. Um, what color pink would go with that? Because, have I got one second? Let me just get, I can either use this, which is the size 11, what we normally use, which is color 21, or, 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 oh my god, oh yes, I have, how does this match is it, will this match it, or will this, maybe it's a bit too shiny this one for it, I think, you think is this a bit too shiny, that's the PF558, so this is, that's definitely too yellowish color. This one could be all right. What do we think? Or shall we go with this one? Shall we go with this one? Well, I think this one might be too, too light. Let's go with that one. And I'm just gonna have a look because this one is 558 and I think that one is 557. So I need the 557 five, in size 11. 
I haven't got that one. I haven't got a bead. Oh my word. <laughs> I haven't got a bead. Can you imagine? I got so much bead. And when you want the one, you haven't got it. I found the size 15 version of it. I got some of those, but I can't see the size 11 anywhere. So I think what we do is. Shall I use the 11 in debt? Let's just use this 558. For one row, I don't think you're going to see the difference. Um, why not use the Delica for all? Because with a ring like this, when we're going to introduce this, we could have a strip just going around, and that would be that would be sitting really nicely. But I want to add like a graduation of bead going across, like a little bit of pattern. A little bit of pattern on there just to have just grab my scissors so what we need to do so if you see these delicate beads are size 11 as well but the size 11 delicate bead is <laughs> a tiny bit smaller than a size 11 seed bead it's, it, I know it's all confusing so um, size 15 is just a tiny bit smaller than the Delica so we need to step up in rows and um, step up in size so we get a nice graduation because we can't um, if you got if you imagine this like you got like a two millimeter gap here I can't force the four millimeter bead into the two millimeter two millimeter gap because then it will pucker and possibly break so I just need a few of each beads the great things about things like this um, that you only need a few bead of each size and just gives that little bit of decoration right so let's move up I'm gonna put the size 11 in there but maybe it's going to give like a little bit of stripe there so it's going to look all right so i'm going to do exactly the same what i've been doing but um i'm using the size 11 and you will see in just in a sec as i pull the size 11 it it will open up and make our strip wider so i'm gonna no should i do a straight row <gasps> i know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do a slanted row so back up <laughs> take this 11 off so we're gonna go across oh yes that's what that's they're gonna look all right so as you see in peyote stitch you got rows going sort of from right from left to right and the next row is going from left to right but it's slightly slanted so if I want to follow I could follow a row up sort of diagonal and that's how I'm going to add my beads on so I'm going to have a diagonal pattern so I just picked up one size 11 then I'm going to carry on all the way up with my delicate beads and when I come back down I'm going to add another size 11 to the bottom I love it doing diagonally because um, the pattern is just going to be sort of a little bit longer um, what colors are delicate so these delicates are DB21 DB021 and they're £3.70 a bag but they go a long way so probably I reckon you would get about four rings out of a bag but I love using delicate beads and actually I'm going to show you something very quickly because I only found this the other day Oh, oh here. Silly me, I put it right next to me. So years and years and years ago, I did a city and guilds in um, in beading, and this was one of my pieces. What I did, one of my designs. What I did. So these are all done in delicate beads. 
I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so you can see it. So this was, we had to do the whole design process. So I, this is like a little beaded purse, although I never really used it as a beaded purse because there's nothing much you could fit. I should have made it like a little bit wider, a little bit longer, and I could have put like glasses in it, but um, never mind. So we had to do the design from a picture and this was like a fuchsia, I think it was like a red fuchsia, um, picture of a red fuchsia or a really really dark pink almost red fuchsia and then I've taken it from that and then we had to sort of do all sorts of motifs and everything else with it but they are delicate beads and you can see the how well they fit together and I got so many other bits of pieces what I did I did having bone stitches with delicate beads I just really I do do love them Right, I'm going to come back down and when I have the last bead, I'm not going to add the Velika bead, I'm going to add the size 11 seed bead. Just all the way, I like, let's turn it around. I keep saying I'm flipping flopping my work and I'm talking to you and I'm making it much harder. Um, Caroline is saying quite a few of us couldn't get you back with comments Lucy Camille Joe and myself mine okay now but I think you lost a lot of us I'm really sorry Caroline I think you know this is the first session it's going to be feeling problems and we're just gonna have to try sort of doing different things but um, just bear with us and I just added the 11 going down now I'm gonna turn around and I'm going to go in on the next row because don't forget our rows are going to be slanted. So the next bead along my row is going to be the three millimeter hematite bead. And then I'm going to add, I'm just going to bring this up a little bit so you can see. I'm going to add a size 11. And keep up with the delicas. So I'm going to get that lovely slanted row. Julie's saying, I love watching your videos, but I miss the ones live sometimes in mornings on Facebook, but I do try to catch up. Um, yeah, we like this this is what like we're saying sometimes you watch something on facebook and it disappears five minutes later but um in youtube like if you miss something it's so easy to go onto the channel and find the video and youtube sends you little notifications and it's all at the top and like um tells you if somebody's put on another video that you can go and watch with facebook like your notifications are so like my notifications are so um inundated with all sorts of other stuff and when i'm trying to go back on myself making it and um yeah so we, we try it we, we can only do and try it if it doesn't work then we try something different so it's not a problem at all so i got all the way down i think i am ought to add the next row next slanted row which i need to start now is should be size eight bead so i'm gonna just pull these to the side so you can see them better I lost my little triangles they were here on the table earlier but I was tidying up and everything is gone I'm just going to move those up a little bit just out of the way so we've got a bit more space so those are my size 11s then my three millimeter then I'm going to use size 8 and I've got the delicacy here right at the end and they my formulas just take them out of the shot as well so i'm working with fine line at the moment so i need to start the next size which i'm going to do those size eight and i'm going up i need the three mil joe's saying she missed most of it I'm so sorry, lovely. For next week, we're gonna work out and we're gonna be better. 
So I got to the stage now, and if I bring it up, you can see, because this is wider, like very on my base for you have to be very careful because I know my next one is a delicate bead and it has to fit into that gap. But as your beading is sitting right on the top of it, I'm gonna bring it in even more. Let's zoom in a bit. Let's zoom back in. As you're bringing it in, that gap might disappear. So you might have to pull your beadwork to the sides to the side to be able to get access to that bead what you need to go through. And I'm almost right down at the end. Then I want to turn it so you can see it's starting to slant, but when we get to the other side, it will pull it back down. Where we come down on the sizes as it goes through to be this lovely pattern. A bit like Celine, yes, exactly, that's what it is. So I need another one of these. I think I missed a size 11. I'm just, <laughs> you can see, once you go back on yourself, you will realize if you picked one bead wrong and I picked up a Delica, where I should have picked up a size 11. So I'm very quickly gonna back stitch on myself. Now when you're back stitching um, with fine line, it's easier. When you're back stitching with thread, you do need to take the needle off of your thread because you want you might have sewn through the thread and then you won't be able to um, go back on itself. So yes, here we picked up a Delica and we should have picked up this size 11. Just pull this through, that's it. I thought there was something wrong. Right, and I'm going back down. So, so can you see now how it's like our pattern is slanted? All the way along. Size 11 we need. Then I need, let's get that tail out of the way. I need the three mil. I mean, you could do this with pearls, you could do with crystals, you could do with crystal rond. <gasps> That's what I should have done. I should have added a couple of crystal rondos in there. Oh, never mind. Next one. And then size eight. That's it, and I'm right down at the bottom, so I'm going to turn around and I need to pick up my four mil. This is really looking out of shape at the moment, but once we get to sort of the other side, and I'm keeping a really nice and tight pattern because I want a um, it's going to give us like a little bit of a dome on the top, so I'm keeping a very nice and tight. Pattern. Once we get to the other side and we start to decrease the beads, that's when everything is going to come together. So I'm just calling it that. Then we need a size 11. And when I turn back now, I'm going to pick up the last size 11. And that row, let me just go up through and I'll show you, that row will be complete although it doesn't look straight at the moment but we will pull it straight that size 11 row is complete all the way down and I'm going back up maybe I should have had the size 8 before I went into the 3 mil and then we could have used size 6 before the 4 mil this is the thing, working out the different size of beads. And sometimes when you're working with beads like this, the four millimeter is might not be four millimeter. It might be 4.2 millimeter or the three millimeter might be 3.2 or, or 2.8 millimeter. And you always have to adjust to them. So I started to go down on size here, just picking up. That four mil, 
and it's a size 8. So I'm keep it, still picking up my four beads as I go up and come down in every single row. I'm just picking up all the different sizes. And I'm picking up a three mil here. Now when I get to the top and I turn around, that will be the last three mil I need to pick up. And I just need to take one more from my strand. That's it. And then coming back down. Might be that doing it with eight, starting it with eight beads might be a bit too much for decoration, but it's gonna it's just gonna fan out. It's gonna still gonna look alright, but it's just gonna fan out. And then um started to decrease. I need eight more of the three mil. One, two, three. Eight. I think that's coming together quite nicely. And going back up. So when, when you decreasing your style, just make sure you're going back to the right one. And you can see now I, when I pull this into shape, that's sort of almost pulling it together. And you're going to have that really nice dome finish on it for a mil. And I need size eight. And this one go to the last one. Oh, oh dear, my thread just broken. And let's go back in. I'm gonna have to come up three. I'm st it's like he's sort of standing here and saying how great is fire line, and then it just breaks on me. I think I pulled it too hard because I wanted to keep a really nice and tight tension. But never mind, I'm just gonna weave it back in and carry on. So I'm gonna go all the way down on myself and then I'm gonna come back up and I will be in a position where I was before. It happens all the time. I'm gonna it a bit less this time. That's it. I'll just go to that. Now when I get to the top, I will knot it together. So I don't lose that nice and tight tension. A size eight. And I'm right at the top, just there. So now I need to turn around and come back on myself. But before I do that, so when when I woven it back in, I went down to the bottom and then come back on myself. And now my tail end and my working thread is right next to each other. So I'm just going to knot it together to secure it, because otherwise I would have to weave quite a lot in. it. I should do another half inch. Because this is like a little bit more slippery than thread. Then I'm just going to keep continue adding my beads in and then everything should be nice and secure. What do you prefer working with? What thread do you use the most? Do let me know if you use Fire line. If you like to use thread or bead alone or what what what's your preferred G thread? I tried that one before as well. Down to the size eleven.
what thread do you use the most? Do let me know in the comments. All in this saying file line, I do know you love file line. Leave that one out, go to the next. And picking up another formula. Lauren is saying the thread to your style. Yes, I use that all the time. So this is going to be quite good. And we will see. I will wear this ring to death. And then I will wear the other one to death. And then we will we'll see which one's going to last longer. Right. Size 8. So when you're decreasing the size, just make sure you're going through the right bead because the gap is quite big, just there. I like Fireline, Wildfire and KO. I have used the one you sell but some shred. I think it depends what you use to and how you pull your thread as well. Brenda's saying she used both. right down on the bottom and I'm going to turn around. Caroline's saying I also use Fireline and Estlon depends on the project. I think that is that like depending on the project exactly I think you nailed it on the head there that what you're going to be using. I I know in my heart I prefer <laughs> Superlon but um, that's what I use the most but I think each of us is different and it's what you used to as well. Right, another size eight. So can you see how this is dome? Can you see how this is doming now? And that's that. That's gonna sit. That dome is gonna sit on the top of my finger. Perhaps next time, I think I need to go to just use a base, a base for six, and not eight. Pull this in a little bit. Diane is saying she's used fire line the most. And um, Lauren is saying I have I think I've used one called KO before, not sure I'm getting the name right. Yes, there is a thread called KO. I have tried that one before, but I really didn't. I don't know, I just didn't like the texture of that one. But that's my opinion. Joe's saying she's using Eslon mostly. Um, Julie's saying I like Fireline. I tried the G thread, but still went back to Fireline. Yes, I got I actually just got G thread not that long ago. And um I tried it on a project, but I think before what I like to do before I make my mind up about something, I do like to go. I do like to have a few goes at it. So I'm coming back down. I'm almost over this pattern. I'm going back into the. Going back in using. The delica beads. Linda is saying that's looking really good. I am pleased with it as well. I think the next one I'm going to make, I'm going to make it a slightly a little bit shorter, and then we'll see how we go along. Size eleven. And if any pattern like this, it's all about getting the sizing right. So moving up and down with the sizes. Let me just go to the end and I will bring it up and show you. So as we started with Delicacy here, we moved up to size 11, 3 mil, size 8 and 4 mil. Although I do think the size 8 looks a slightly bit smaller than the 3 mil. So the next one I'm doing, I'm going to swap these two around. So 
the size 8 will be before the 3 mil and the 3 mil and the 4 mil will be right next to each other. Um, it's just really working out that which bead is. It can be just like a <laughs> maybe a fraction of a millimeter difference, but as you're making your pattern, it does make a huge difference. So that's size 11. I love the colors too. I think sometimes just using plain colors, it's really it's really nice sometimes less is more I guess but I love this um, rhodium color because it's not shiny silver like um, my rings are white gold and it's more this rhodium color it's more white gold than to me just keep going up so I'm reintroducing slowly row by row i'm reintroducing the beads again i think what did i do wrong again the next bead is not sticking up how it should be sticking up or did i go to Let's just step back one. Oh, that's what I did. I, as I was pulling it through, so you know if you went wrong, as I was pulling it through, in the same time as I was stitching through one bead, I accidentally went through the bead in front of as well. And I came out of this bead here and they, they, I was, I was on the inner side and there were nowhere to go. So this is what I love about POT Stitch, that very easily you can identify if you went wrong somewhere and then retrace your steps and do it again I think I got my that's it caught there is there caught? no, I went through the wrong one again I'm just chatting and um, see this is when you re this is what I said when you're re going down. Um, so this is a classic example right here. When I'm going down, I got a little gap here. So I naturally went to this bead, but in fact, I need to go to the last bead and then to pull it up. And look, how nice is that? How nice and domey is that going to be? So I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna run back up I'm down to the size 11 now and after the size 11 we will be back down to the what's going on with this because the delica beads all the way now when I make a ring like this my my fingers do swell I guess as I go through uh, the day and um, I like to make them just slightly a little bit bigger than what I need just a tiny just one size bigger because by the end of the day like this ones is that you can see that um, they're quite hard to take off and I'm just running back I am adding delicate beads now all the way um, I ordered two of the 12 super on thread one group was sold out yes I think it's the pinks and purples because I think we haven't got burgundy but if you do that's the only one which is missing and I keep is it burgundy or sienna one or the other I think it's burgundy which is out of stock so when one color goes out of stock we can't do the whole mix but um, if you're not so bothered, I should show you just one sec. I got right to the top. So the one which is out of stock is this one. So the purple going into the cream. And this is the burgundy which is out of stock. So if you're not too bothered about the burgundy, then just give a call to the office and say like I know you haven't got burgundy I would like this mix can you put an extra purple or extra pink in for me because I know I'm going to use those most 
and then um, then you can have that one as well. Um, Julie's saying I've used Eslon, but I find the split. Don't know what I'm doing wrong with it. Um, nothing really. I think it's just like it's depending on a lot of things, depending on your needle. Um, sometimes I'm just going to untwist this a little bit because it's all twisted up, and I think that's why my it's knotting a little bit. Nothing really. Just uh, sometimes you do get a bad one like <laughs> once in a blue moon I have had I believe it was a few years ago I had one color I don't even know what color it was which just kept breaking but um, I never really had a problem with it so you can try so you can try to wax it or more but it shouldn't be I just use it off the reel and it just should be all right so we are almost right down to the bottom. And I'm going to turn around and I'm back doing the. See how lovely is that? I'm back down doing the delicate beads now. So let's just move these out of the way. And I'm just going to go up and down with the delicates again making the strip and when I get to the right size I'm going to join the end and the beginning together just sort of zip it together now I could have done the pattern I wanted this sort of slanted pattern on the ring because that's quite actually that slanted pattern is quite comfortable to wear but I think for the next one I'm going to have to go down to six so I don't get because with this one look how big is the dome we got quite a big dome on there so if I do it with six beads on the rose gold I shouldn't get that big of a dome and just keep going up and I'll back backwards and forwards Lauren is saying they did that for me was <laughs> was that the thread lovely So has any of you made these um, rings before? I know Brenda, you made it because you came to the workshop at the warehouse, so I know that you made it. Um, Robin is saying, hey Kitty, joining a bit late, but I can rewatch the YouTube later. Love watching the videos back on YouTube. Anyway, when you get the ring totally sorted, will you be publishing it as a tutorial on Totally Beats? So this is the creation station and um, there is so many projects there is so many projects i really want to do and like you know making a ring for myself or um like i'm doing tonight or other bits of pieces what i want to do some more bezeling i want to do like you know work out some other patterns and bits of pieces and um you know, us <laughs> Simon sort of sponsors me and Sarah to do the Facebook lives. Um, he said that um, Creation Station is really sort of my little baby and it's what I want to do. So I can do it on my own time. <laughs> that's what he said. So I said, that's not a problem. We move it to one of the evenings and um, I'll do it on mine. So um, we have got a ring kit on Totally Beads which is the POT stitch rings. I will pop the link in the description later on when I'm able to edit the video. And with that one, I don't even know how many it made. It made quite a few, made a quite a few rings. And it had three millimeter bead uh, in it. It had crystals, three millimeter pearls in it. It had crystals in it. It had maybe a couple of different sizes of crystals, or might have been a four millimeter crystal as well. It had a few few different sizes of beads in it and size eleven seed beads, and it had size eight and size six beads. But there was 
I don't know, about seven or eight different beads in that kit and you can make loads of different beads. And that one, that kit comes with instructions and I think it's about four or five page that one goes through different things because you can make a ring where it's just a simple band or you can make a ring where um, you do a particular pattern, you can spell a name out in there or anything you really like. And you could do rings like this where you sort of add graduate the beads up and down to form a pattern i have made a bracelet doing this pattern so we have got a similar pattern for a bracelet have i got any of those here no i think i got, I, I can show you how does it look like in a bracelet i i think i got one <laughs> but you never know at the moment everything is everywhere I can't wait to get back to my um I'm sure no I want No, I can't wait to get back to the office. I can't. I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to find it. And I'll put it in a little box because I was like tidying up the other way, but I was tidying up so many different things. And um, I can't wait to get back to the office. So the walls are painted now, <laughs> and I have to wait for the plumber because I decided to put another radiator in there. So. The radiator which is in there it's really small and it doesn't because i got two big, great big windows a bay window and another window on the other side the heat does go out quite quick so i decided to add another radiator on there but um he said to me that oh well just let me know when the radiator comes in and then i can come and fit it for you like real quick and uh, i phoned him up the radiator came in on Friday, I think it was. So I phoned him up and said to him like, oh look, the radiator is here. It was supposed to come in on Monday, but it didn't come, but he told me not to phone you up before I physically have the radiator in the house. And he said to me, well, I can come to you on the 27th. And I was like, oh, well, I was hoping <laughs> that you can come like next week. And he was like, oh, how's the 8th of December sounds? I was like, well, that's not any better than the 27th of November. So um, I have to wait a couple of weeks. Was it 29th? Two weeks on Friday. So not this Friday, next week. Next week on Friday, he's gonna come. And once that's done, the carpet can go down and then I can move back in. I really cannot wait. I think I'm gonna need quite a few more of rows there. I do like it but I do feel it's I think it's sticking up a little bit too much you think what do you think does it stick up a bit too much I think we need to do it with six or hmm maybe I need to leave out that the four millimeter is too big for the pattern maybe we just need to go size 11 size 8 add the three millimeter in or maybe if I swap those around, what do you think? Do let me know. Um, love this one. Can you give the list for the beads you use? Yes, of course I can. So I use three millimeter and four millimeter round beads and Delica beads. So the Delica beads are sort of cylinder. It's more like a cylinder shape. It's very, it's the, Similar size than the size 11 seed beads, a tiny bit smaller, I think, but you wouldn't really see that. And um, Brenda is saying I love it, <laughs> and they're saying I like it. I think it might be coming up a bit too much, so 
I might give the four millimeter a miss in the next one. So I'm gonna go ahead. All I'm gonna do with this is go and put the strap all around. I just, I don't know, I think for me it's twisting a bit too much. Maybe I was holding one at too tight tension. Maybe if I wear it for some time, um, it will even out. But perhaps I think it's just a tiny bit too big. Maybe. I mean, maybe I just need to, or maybe take the formula out. Hmm. Not sure. There's some something just not. Um, those formulas just look like actually look. Those formulas look a slightly bit bigger than these formulas. So this is why I said sometimes you get a strand of beads and you really need to look what you're doing because this one and let me just put it right next to it. I should take this off from here and I'm going to hold up. Let's hold up the strand. I think those silver ones look bigger than the rose gold, aren't they? Is it just me? Is it just my eye? Or I think they look bigger. If I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. By bead ten, we go on an extra bead on the rose gold. So maybe that's what it is, that the silver is just a tiny bit bigger. And this is this is what um this is what happens sometimes when you like get like hematite is a natural bead and they um carve it and they plate it and um this is what I said at the beginning, this is what happens sometimes that you get a bead, you start using it, and after I don't know. After a while, we realized that um, four millimeter is not quite four millimeter, it's just a tiny bit bigger or a tiny bit smaller because they, if it's 3.8, between 3.8, I think, and 4.2 millimeter, they can say, they can round up and down, they can say that's a four millimeter bead. And that's sort of the generally the industry with anything they can do that. So it's the same with like seed beads sometimes. So some of the factories do have more of a, I think a quality control to like seed beads when you get the same color. So you order a seed bead and I don't know, three, four years later, you order the same bead because you want to finish your project or might be five years later. And the color what comes is a shade smaller or a shade, uh, <laughs> a shade lighter or a shade darker. And that is because um, that is because it's a different batch, and the same bead shape beads as well, depending on what which machine that bead went through, I guess you get a different size, slightly, only slightly. So when you're using stringing, you can't see at all, but when you're using stitching, it does really show up. I think I either need to introduce a size six bead right there next to those because the eight and a six is too close together so I'll, I'll, I'll try on the next one um robin is saying i love it but maybe for us everyday practical use it might be in the way um where the thumb bends oh yeah i didn't even think about that i would totally where it but perhaps a smaller one would work as well yeah i will have a look i will have a i finished this one i will start wearing it and i think i'm gonna make the rose gold a bit smaller and then we will see i like the pattern i like the slanted pattern but i think that bridge because that bead is not four mil that must be a little bit bigger than four mil i'll finish this and start wearing it and we see what happens and i will make the rose gold up and I will make the rose gold with the thread, um, super long size D thread, because D is the thicker, double A is the thinner, and we see where we get with it. So I'm just taking a sip of my Coke. You hardly ever get Coke in this house, <laughs> because it, it goes like the cold dust. 
Um, I use three millimeter black pearls and they are so much smaller than normal. So don't show as well as a ne necklace. Um, yeah, it can, it can happen. And it's like, there's nothing you can do with it really. Um, it's just it's just the way how they operate and even like size 11 seed beads or three millimeter pearls or three millimeter crystals from factory to factory they are different as it's the same goes for um i just over it and it's come out the same goes for clothes as well so <laughs> if i go into one particular clothes store i'm a size smaller than if i go into another one and if I go into going to a third, I'm not going to tell you what size I am. I'm huge, but um, <laughs> I'm going to a third when I'm a size bigger as well. So between two different clothes stores, I've um, got two size different. It's so infuriating. Yes, it is. But I think that is just the way it is. I think it would be like shoe sizes gets me all the time because. With shoe size as well, I can be a size up or a size down, depending on where I go. A Clark's usually, like I love Clark's shoes, they fit me quite well. Um, but if I go into another one, then I need, uh, I just, it's just a nightmare. <laughs> Don't show Sarah the rose gold and you will use it. Yes, I am sure that she would, but if I'm making my size, but mind you, she said yesterday, and you heard it all, that she's going to make me a ring. So perhaps I ought to make one for her as well. Joe's saying the same with Miracle Beads, but it's different. I think it's just what machine come out of it, and it's, there is no control over it. And this is why when I do stuff for the TV, or if I do stuff for kids, I don't release it until the stock is here because anything you know can happen so i'm probably only got about a feet left here so i'm just going to go a couple of rows up and down and then i think i'm going to take more thread off the tail and continue my beading a little bit that way so i don't have to join a new thread in yeah but it's like everything <laughs> Robbie's saying that's the European class for me. I'm sure it's the same in America as well. That um, one brand you will be a bigger size than another brand, or it will, you will be a smaller size. I think it just depends on their designers. And sometimes when they change designers, like clothes, like retail stores, then it becomes different as well. Oh, yes, yeah, she did say she would make one. Oh, let's see. I know she's really, really busy this week. So last week, I think she said, <laughs> probably not, not allowed to tell you, but she had like three days of work when she had like 20 hours. She was working for like 20 hours, like the poor, the poor girl, because she starts like so early on um, creating craft. And so she sometimes have the first show of the day and then she has the last show of the day. And you have to be there like two and a half hours before or two hours before um, before you the show even starts and then it's half an hour away so you have to leave the house two and a half hour before your show starts and then you have to get up and you have to get ready so the late the days can be really really long so I know she was really tired bless her Right, so I'm just gonna come down. Maybe I go up one more time on this side with this one and I'm gonna change to the other one. Um, Linda's saying we're not seeing Robin's comments. I'm not sure why is that. I always thought the CNC repeated the late show. So, um, CNC is live from I think 6.45 
Yes, I think they live from 6.45, because it goes 6.45, 7.30, 8.50, 9 o'clock. Yes, so they live from 6.45 until 10 at night or something like that. So it's a long day. So if you got the first show at 6.45, you have to be at the studios like <laughs> really, really early. And then if you have got the last show of the day, you don't get home until like 11 o'clock. So a really long day. Brenda is saying Chinese clothes sizes are ridiculous. If you want a UK medium size, you need to get extra large from China. Oh, don't even get me started on the Chinese clothes. So funny story. I mean, you know me. I'm I'm not small. I'm I'm I probably I I wouldn't say like I'm huge, but I'm not I'm not small. I'm not a small girl. So when um when we were in China, or well, this was many many years ago, and um. Like you go around the markets and you look at all sorts of Lucy for Lucy it's great because everybody for her we can find clothes very easily because she's very thin but I could not find <laughs> anything to fit me need to have Simon so Simon I know Simon had to buy a couple of shirts when we were out there and he can only buy short sleeve shirts because the long sleeve shirts like finished up here for him Bless him. Right, so I'm just going to take this down. I think it's almost big enough to zip it up now. Although I have got quite a large sausage finger there. So I'm just going back up. And then I'm going to change to the other side. Maybe go down one more time don't really need to leave a huge tail and because i'm looking, working with fireline i'm more conscious of it because fireline is obviously much much more expensive than super long thread so i really want to have as less wastage as possible but i don't want to leave my tail too short either because then it will be difficult to work it off later on Oh, Angie's saying, I think I found that hat to comment. Yes, you have Angie because I can see it. It's all going to be, I think, a learning curve from you. But just think about it. that If you come and learn YouTube, then there is so much stuff on here that you can watch and you can see. And so many different people. Um, Facebook is really much sort of um, led by sort of communities and groups and certain people you follow and in or, or, or pages you follow I guess and in YouTube it's really led by the how to style that how to do things and you can love it and then it's so easy to find things on there as well I mean you can get lost but <laughs> like going from one video to another because it will suggest you all sorts of different stuff right let's have a look is this big enough yes yeah, look at my finger how big is that and it's not i still need i reckon about eight rows eight beads so i'm going to change to the other side i'm going to get a bit more thread off here i keep saying thread and it's fire line which is more like a monofilament rather than a thread but um just get this off that's it maybe that much and add a needle to it I'm gonna leave that needle on there because I will need it to sew it off later when I got loads of needles here so I'm just gonna grab another one from the pile and then I don't have to re-thread it when I come to work the tail off just be careful if you do leave your needle on the other end that don't poke yourself with it down a bit that's it turning it around I need a few more beads and then we are ready to go I think I need about eight rows so 
So is there anybody on here who hasn't worked with Delica beads before? Um, do you think I spend hours on YouTube sometimes I get lost of watching different tutorials or oh, me too as well? Lauren is saying I stopped watching CNC when they went to 45 minute shows far too rushed for the demonstrators too sorry for them having to rush what they are doing supposed to relax not stress I understand why they went to 45 minutes but I do feel that as well that the demo is a little bit more rushed and you have to get more things on it was it, it was just fine attachments sort of little tuning little fine tuning little fine you know making a little bit of differences because before when we had the one hour show we were able to have maybe 15 items on the counter and now we got the 45 minute shows the maximum we can have on there is 10 because you, you haven't got time to go through everything so i think everybody just needed that sort of change over but and you can probably only demo five things in the 45 minutes which in the hour you were able to demo maybe five so the three three to five yeah i know exactly what you feel um robin saying still in newbie status just learning basic stitches and i'm all thumbs um <laughs> me too some days i keep pricking myself with the needle this is peyote stitch this is one of the loveliest stitches i think peyote stitch was i can't remember but i think peyote stitch was the first stitch i learned and i loved it and there is again so many different variations you can do with it lauren is saying done a bit with delica but not a lot so i went through a phase No, I haven't got them down here. I'm just thinking. I went through a phase about, <laughs> you know, 15 years ago, about four, 14, 15 years ago, when I'd done everything with Delica beads. I was just like, for about six months, I was using Delica beads, Delica beads, Delica beads. I've done so many different necklaces and projects and everything else in Delica beads. So when you first start using them, because they create this really nice, I don't know, fabric like texture, even more so than you use with size 11s. I um, I kept using it, but Delica beads have limitations as well because the, these are more cylinder shape and the size 11s more sort of a rounded edges with rounded shapes. So you can use them for like sort of different things. They, if you use them for the same stitch, they create different effects. If that makes sense. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. It made sense in my head. So I think maybe a couple more and we'll see and we will be able to zip it up. Right, going down. That's it. Just make sure it doesn't loop on itself. Going back up. Caroline's saying, I do like the liquid beads, but they are a bit expensive. Um, they can be on the pricey size, but um, I do think that you know you get a lot, lot for it because they're lighter in weight. So the size 11s are a little bit chunkier. Let me just pick up. So if I pick up a Delica beads and I pick up a size 11 and I bring it right up to, so you can see the size 11s are a little bit chunkier than the Delicas and Delicas got larger holes than the size 11, which is crazy because they're such um, a tiny bead. But um, you get more in a bag than you get through the size 11s. So I don't know actually how many I'm gonna I know in size 11 seed beads in one gram you get about 105 beads and I will count Delica for you when I'm at work next time and I'll let you know but you get much more 
in one gram of Delica than what you get in one gram of size 11 seed beads. So they're a little bit more expensive, but you do get more in there. And you think it wouldn't be so bad with the 45 minutes on Cree and Craft had they given us more jewelry shows. Um, so when the, um, this is actually I can tell you now because it's not going to be happening, we're not going to be doing it, but um, before all this lockdown, all this the current situation, what happened, we were in talks with Cree and Craft that we, we like Totally Beads, are going to have a regular show on Tuesday mornings and uh, every week. And we and we everybody else can keep the Wednesday hour, and we were gonna go and um, we were sort of just in talks about what we're gonna go and how we're gonna go because they have to budget and they have to present it into their bosses and like we were going through the whole process, and then obviously the whole situation happened, and we just turned I guess 180 degree around <laughs> and went in a complete different direction so we started the Facebook lives and started to do things more on our website and started to do less on the TV and to be honest for us like for me personally it really worked I think maybe one more row and I am there I quite like that I think I'm gonna I'm going to reduce it for six or there's, there's something still what I don't I'm going to go back I'm going to leave my end back here and just reinforce this ridge here so it sits straighter but the next one I'm going to try with six so do I need one more row or am I all right because I want it a little bit looser don't forget don't do the, your beading too tight because then it's going to sort of cut off circulation to your finger but your ring and this goes to the fine line as well and i find this with the thread as well over time i'm be talking about you know you have to wear it a lot it does get a tiny marginally stretches out a little bit so i think i'm going to be all right so i'm going to need to zip up the beginning and the end and i'm going to turn it around and actually I'm on the right way at the moment so I don't need to add an extra row so as you can see you got your rows sort of sitting lengthwise and at the end of the row one bead one bead is sticking out and in the next row the bead is further in so on the opposite end when you're zipping it up the same bead the same row so if it's sticking out on this side on the other side you want it like further in and in the next row this side is going to stick out and that side is going to be further in and all the way to the top because you're going to be zipping this up so I'm just going to stick my finger in there and bring it up so as I am on one end I'm here I'm going to go through the first bead on that side then I'm going to go come straight back to the bead the second row bead on this side and I'm going back to that side and I do like to sort of do two beads at the same time because if I pull it backwards and forwards you can be pulling it apart a little bit but you can do so you can just go through that side just to show you and pull it up and then come back to this side for me I like to go through two beads at the same time so I would pick on that one and then go through there and pull it tight. So when I get to the end, what I do, I not, this is my original sort of, this was my working end and this is my tail end. So this is my original working thread, but they both should be side by side. And I'm going to knot these together. Then I'm going to take my end down. I'm going to actually weave it further up in a, I could say triangle motion going always to the one side. I'm going to knot this together so I've got a nice strong finish because I'm using this as a ring and I am quite klutzy and I use my hand quite a lot. I do like to go back over myself so I'm just gonna go down in this row and as I'm going down I'm going diagonally 
because I want to get to the middle. So as I'm coming out of this bead, the second bead just there, can you see? I'm gonna go into this bead, then that bead, that bead, that bead, all the way down, going through those beads, or with the neighboring bead in the next row, but always to the left. So I will get to the middle and I can reinforce that bead. And then when I get to the end, I just turn around. I can go to like two, two, three beads at the same time. And now I'm gonna go to the right. So always going through the row above the bead, which is sitting to the right. Just like that and all the way up. Oh, Jenny's saying, why are they called tennis bracelets? I'm gonna tell you all about that tomorrow. It's a funny story. I think it was, I, mean, I think it was in the 1930s, but I have to, I have, well, have a look. So there was this very famous tennis player and she was playing tennis and she had a diamond bracelet on, which was sitting a certain way. It was a, a, a um, that particular look and this diamond bracelet broke and it sort of become really famous and now they call Bash. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the whole story tomorrow. It's really good. It is, it's just any bracelet which is sort of that flat, that flat look and got a row of beads going through it can be called as a tennis bracelet. It's not, it, you don't have to go and play tennis in it. <laughs> that's, that's not why. <laughs> like when he's saying might look a bit, a, a bit better, a bit smaller, I think so too as well. So the next one I'm gonna do, I think, and we, we just looked at it, that these four millimeter beads are a little bit bigger than four mil. So I'm gonna go in, right into the middle and I'm gonna reinforce it and see what happens. And just go through those and I'm at the end and then I'm turning again and it might perk up a little bit I guess then once we reinforce it but with the rose gold I'm gonna make the rose gold one up as well we won't have time today but I'll make it up I'm gonna start layering this so we'll see how long the fire line is going to last as a ring. It depending as well what sort of beads do you use. So if you're using crystal beads, sometimes they can have a little bit of a sharper end and they cut your thread or your fire line. Right, so I'm in the decoration bit now. So I'm going to go up and down in this middle bit a few times just to sew this together. It's, it's quite tight, but I just want it to sort of perk up. And don't forget, we had that thread breaking there. So that probably is giving a little bit of an off center look. Going up this, this, this bead. This is what I feel is a bit out of line. So that's what I want to. You can always go back. Any pattern you do this, you can always go back and go around again in certain places just to reinforce your work. And I do like to reinforce my work. So I would do bracelets or necklaces, I usually go through it again and again. Right, I think it's gonna be good. So what, just do tell me in the, um, do tell me in the comments please, what do I need to give you the links for? Because I will go back afterwards when this is uploaded and put all the links in there. So I know you wanted links for the POT rings. 
and what we do have on Totally's website, which is using slightly different beads. Well, not slightly, actually, totally different beads. But um, and you wanted the link for the four millimeter and three millimeter hematite beads I used in this one. So I'm going to just go backwards and forwards in this middle section, just to really reinforce and make these beads sit nice. Make them behave. Or you can run up and down, just following any thread path. So don't really pay attention to it anyway, that, what, what way I'm going. But as you can see, just by going through once or twice, that middle row, it's really straightened up. in from the bottom just like that and keep on going and that's one for the next one I think it's gonna look good actually let's just try it on yeah I think I, I think it is I want it a bit flatter it's too too sort of on the top don't you think so the next one i'm definitely gonna make it flatter now what makes something like this stand up more and more is like the beads you use so if you graduate it and you keep your tension loose then this is going to be flatter if you jump up in bead sizes quite gradually and you pull your tension tight that's when you're going to get this um, bubble on the top. I mean, it doesn't look good. Well, it doesn't look bad, but it doesn't look good at the same time. So it's just something about it. And when I go sort of backwards and forwards and I do my beading, I will not, um, for me, that is okay, but it's not perfect. So I'm going to go back and redo it. Um, a list of beads for this ring and rose gold delicates in size 11, size 8, etc. Please, so we can make from this video. Of course, I will, but any delica will do. Um, this one is DB21, but I will um, add the link at the top. Um, I just used PF558, which is a, a, a nickelly color again. But I think there is, there is a nickel color. There is a more of a disc color in... Um, in Delica beads, I think it's 7 11. 7, <laughs> 7 11. That's um, let me just quickly have a look. Total of beads, I want 7 11. It's just giving me it's coming. Oh, yes, it is, but it's called nickel. The color you haven't got in size 11, we do have it in bugle beads in three millimeter and nine millimeter and that's more of this color how funny is that do i remember color numbers <laughs> but i don't remember the names it's really strange how i think some people's like oh how my brain works like i don't i don't i don't remember people's names and i get so embarrassed like when i ask somebody's name and they tell me their name and like two minutes later i was like oh sorry i, I forgot what what's your name <laughs> and they, they tell me their name again and i guarantee about five minutes later i don't do this in, intentionally i will forget the name again and then i perhaps ask one more time but after that it's embarrassing to ask again so i just sort of try not to not, not to ask for the name so that's why I love when we're doing the workshops in the warehouse, we used to do little stickers and stick our names on um, on our top. So I knew exactly when I looked at somebody that who am I talking to. So I think that's it. I'm just going to work this off, but um, you know exactly what to do. So I will go ahead and uh, get those things and add them into the link so you can have a look and you can make it really easy to make i think i would go down to six beads on the side and i will do that with the rose gold um if I, <laughs> if i haven't got time to make it next week i'll try to make it then perhaps we can make um 
make it together next week and I did we do a different pattern on the top just to more like sort of more of a graduated not, not slanted but more of a straight line so we can do that as well <laughs> the ring looks lovely I think Sarah would like that maybe rose gold yes I have got the rose gold here I'm gonna to have to go and grab some seed beads for it so perhaps we if I have time this week then we'll make it up if not then um, then make it up next week um, but I do want to play with some Christmas baubles and bits of pieces as well so we see we see how we go along see see how far we get um, before I get with this week it's just at the moment with decorating and everything else there's just so much going on and it's you have to sort of pay attention to so many different things right so I think that's it for me today because all I'm going to do is just going backwards and forwards reinforcing this ring a little bit working my little tail ends off and that's it and you're going to be seeing me wearing this from tomorrow and then we will see how long it's going to last and then I will make another color up or actually you might make another one like this I will go and um I will go and hunt the warehouse maybe for another string of this which is supposed to be four millimeter but it's a little bit little bit um the old numbers for the rose gold list I will do um I will put it up there and we see but I'm gonna start wearing it tomorrow and then we'll see how long this lasts I don't know there, there's something about it maybe I need to take this one off or with the, with the next one we're gonna do it something differently but it might flatten out a little bit as I wear it we see so I'm just turn it back on me that's it so thank you so much for watching today I'm so sorry that we have to sort of go backwards and forwards make sure that you subscribe to the page and press on notifications so in YouTube you won't get automatically notified if something's going on you have to press on the notification button if you do press on the notification button then YouTube is going to send you a message every single time when we go live or plan to go live which is the next thing I'm going to be working out to how to schedule things so you will get a notification like half an hour before we go live that um, in half an hour we are going live so you can have time to sort of sort yourself out and or, or, or you know if you would like to watch which is in Facebook you don't really get that either so that's that's another I suppose point up for YouTube so that's it for me tonight do take care everybody have a lovely evening and actually I will see you tomorrow morning and we're gonna be making where is my bracelet gone um, now I think I moved it on the table because I was tidying the table up earlier and we were making a lovely bracelet tomorrow with six millimeter hematite and crystal beads and size eight seed beads so it's very easy and quick make as well right oh well, when is asking are you seeing my message yes I do lovely I can see your message um nice and clear there let me just show you I can do this and you can see I can I can see your Oh, I just removed it put it back in there's your message I can see your message lovely that's it so bye everybody have a lovely evening and I will see you tomorrow morning on Total Deeds take care